Hey there, and let's get to it. Power windows are vector masks that you can draw and animate or track inside your viewer to isolate portions of your frame. You can think of them exactly the same as using masks inside of most NLEs and in After Effects. When you first activate the window palette, you get a collection of some basic shapes. Additionally, if you ever need two of the same type of window, you can always add more by clicking on the icons at the top. Just like with qualifiers, if you want to start applying windows, you have to make sure you have at least two nodes inside of your node editor, otherwise you're just going to be cutting a portion of the image out, and your final output will not include anything outside of it. So to make a new serial node, I'm just going to select my current node and click Alt-S, and now I can drop in a window, and it will be alright because I've still got my backplate underneath it. The five default windows are the linear, which gives you a box shape, circular, polygonal, which looks like a box shape but gives you more individual point control, the power curve, which is the fully customizable window, and the gradient, which gently tapers off your image across the selection. So with the highlight tool, it looks like this. Together with adding more windows, you're able to activate and deactivate them by clicking on the symbol. With a window active, you can double-click next to it to give it a name. You can use the same highlight and matte controls in the top of the viewer to see the effect of the window. And you can use the two symbols at the end to either invert your selection or to treat the window like a mask. Now, this won't look like much until you start introducing other windows. And that's when you can start juggling their relationship with one another. You can remove the effects of a window either by turning it off or you can reset it by going into the options menu and resetting the selected window. If you have any of the additional windows added to your palette, you can delete them by clicking on the word delete. Default windows cannot be deleted. Each window can be controlled in one of two ways. Either using the on-screen controls in which you can drag a window expand and contract its individual sides, or uniformly scale it up and down, and also use the rotate handle around the anchor, or expand the feather effect. All of these controls are reflected in the transform section of the window itself. The application of these windows is similar to how we'd use qualifiers. It's the ability to isolate certain parts of an image so that you can grade it separately from another part. In this case, for example, my interest might be in increasing contrast and saturation on the actress's face without bringing any more attention to the background. This can also be a pretty handy tool for introducing vignettes into your image. So I could add yet another serial node to my image drop a circular window to it and expand my viewer just for a second. Uh, make sure that my power windows are visible and change the size, expand the aspect, start to grade the image. In this instance, I'm getting the center, so I'll need to invert the selection and turn the window off so I can better see what I'm doing and appropriately feather out the selection. The way a power curve works is exactly the same, except you have to identify your own points. Simple clicking will drop down straight lines. Clicking and dragging will generate a bezier curve that will allow you to draw more intricate shapes. Make sure that you use your scroll wheel to zoom out of the image if you have to, and close the shape off by clicking on the first point that you made. From now on, I have exactly the same controls as I had previously, so I can make changes to the colors and to clean up the edges of my selection. One final note to make is that if you generate a layout of these windows that you intend to reuse, you can always save them as a preset. Let's say you were color grading a series of interviews, and the way that the interviewees are set up is very similar from one shot to another. You can create your windows, get your interviewees to pop out, and then save that as a preset that you can then click on and apply in future shots. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.